It's the 1st of December 2022. It's a reasonably good day. That's the morning time. And this is about the Sean Quinn and contracts for differences. RTE, that's the Irish National Broadcaster, nothing like my uh, um, channel, is has been done three night serialization. There must have been an hour, maybe an hour and 10 minutes each. And I have made it my business to watch two of them and I'll watch the other on the podcast. The problem with the podcast is that as people watch stuff online, they're going to be have the license take forced out of them through their taxes. That's what the Taoiseach wants. Okay, be better if you just paid your license and either seen it or not. But that's another day's work. The program, in my opinion, is enjoyable. And Sean Quinn uh, responds and, and lets them into their home, into his home and deals with it and it's it's not bad journalism at all. I, I would have to admit that that side, there is a slight side of RTE which can be quite good journalism. There's a few there, but that's it. Now, the thing about it is that uh, I'm just going to deal with one of the things mentioned and then maybe I'll come back to a wee bit about Quinn because <laughs> I remember fixing a puncture going down the country, going across the west, and I was fixing a puncture at the gate of the present sleeve Russell Hotel, and I think it was a hatch, a place for hatching chickens, and it was closed down. It was a desolate place along the road, and there was the sleeve Russell Hotel. So I remember when Quinn was only starting up. Now, the thing about it is contracts for differences. I'm not going to write too much, and I'll stop if I have to write anything. But the best example I can give of them is a bookmaker, right? We'll say that I'm a bookmaker. I'm... Val's bookmaker, Val's book bookmaking, Val's betting or whatever. And I have an office, a shop in the town, and a couple of girls working there, a couple of people. And you're coming in and out. Now, if you're a lad on the dole and no prospects of employment with old bummer jackets on you, an odd point, an odd fag, and an odd bet on the horses, you probably won't even be let open an account there. But if you do open an account, it'll only be for 20 or 30 euros of credit. So if you have an account where you put in your money and you can ring up and have the bet, that's all right. I think it may be illegal to have uh, bets on credit, but just for the moment, assume it is not. Assume it is not. Now, in the United States, there are no bookie shops. It's illegal. Okay, it's illegal. And maybe it was better if there were because it did educate them how, what big a scam they actually are. Now, however, now I've explained that. So I'm the bookie. You come in and you you're not up to much. I might give you a credit of twenty euros. That's it. Thirty euros. But if you're a substantial person, you're a person that has property, that has a quarry, that has a beef farm or dairy farm, and you come in to open an account, I might well let you have an account there with a good bit of credit on it. A bit of credit. So I might say, right, John, you go ahead there, or Jack or Paddy, throw in a throw in a thousand or you might throw in nothing no i'll throw in nothing i'll put on me bets so i decided to take a risk and you start betting and uh, you have a few a few wins and now now you're up uh, 400 euros and then suddenly you put the hole on one horse at five to one or whatever it is and you're down 100 euros i could decide whether to leave you alone or just let you know this suppose you put on it you put a bet of a thousand and you're now 1500 euros down I might ring you up and say, Sean, uh, Jack, put on, you have to come in and pay the debt you owe me. That's a margin call in C in contracts for difference terminology. You have to come in and pay. If you don't come in and pay, I might not let you put on any more bets. There might be trouble. And you might come in and pay. You might just come in and throw me a check for the amount and off we go again. Or you could put a bet on, a small amount of bets on and start winning again. Doesn't really matter. You understand the concept. You pay nothing, zero, a duck egg, right? You have the right to bet up and down on horses. It says just on horses. And you win and you lose and you win and you lose. I might never put a limit on that. I could say, right, after a year, you have to come in and settle the debt one way or the other. Or I could say it might not bother. And it could work out that it's still zero at the end of the year with winning and losing. Or you might be 50 euros down and you might come in and settle it or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Understand? Now, the way it works in the betting in Ireland, if I go in and bet on a horse, I bet on Donald Trump, 
I put my money on with a few bookmakers because I knew they might get stung and spread out. And I went in afterwards and they paid me debt. So they got me money before the event, before the election, and they paid me after. The next year I bet on him and he lost, and or he said to have lost, and they had me money before and they kept me money afterwards. So that's different. Just get out of this. In this concept, it's it's a contract. The contract is that I can bet on my horses or whatever I want, or you can bet on your horse on your stock with me, and I keep the account, and that's all right. There's no actual end to a contract for differences, so it could go on indefinitely. If it rises in value, I have to pay you the margin. The person they're called over the counter contracts for differences. They're called over the counter contracts for differences. That means they're outside most of the regulation of the world. The financial regulators don't want them really, or they don't get involved. They're over the counter. In the United States of America, no American citizen can use contracts for differences, either in the United States or outside of the United States. So if you're born and reared in New York and you have an American passport, you cannot go to Spain and start this in Spain or England. You can't do it. It's illegal. If you are an, a, a, a citizen of Ireland, Spain or elsewhere, you can go to America and use contracts for differences. You understand that now? American citizen cannot indulge at all in America and cannot indulge outside America. And a non-American citizen can, can do it in the countries where it is legal. There's a list of them online. There's about 25. It doesn't include Ireland, but Ireland is one of them. Okay. I think Singapore is one and Hong Kong is one. And Britain is one, as far as I understand. I didn't check it out. You can check it yourself. But the point is, if you're an outsider of America, you can go in and use CFDs in America. Now, what I'm not sure if did Sean Quinn use American CFDs did he use an American trader to buy his over-the-counter CFDs or did he buy them in Ireland, in, the, in Dublin or what? It doesn't really matter. He was entitled to buy these. Now, if you're making the money, at any stage, you can demand the money, what you're entitled to. If you can get a market for the underlying thing, you can sell it. So you can decide to buy, to sell this the thing, if you can get anyone to buy it off you. But if nobody wants to buy it for any reason, you have to keep paying, they have to keep paying you the margin. If it, on the other hand, goes down, you have to pay them the margin. So you could end up with margins everlasting. If nobody wanted to buy them, as in the case of Anglo Irish Bank, you could end up uh, stuck for the margin. Do you understand my point? You could end up stuck for the margin forever. Okay, now do you understand that? This was outlined to me in 2002. I did a business degree course one Sunday morning and had a sore head because there was a booze up in the Irish Kiltus in Monkstown. It's a, an, Irish, an Irish music group. And a big sore head on me and the professor in the morning time uh, explained this to me. And I said, hold on a second. Go over that again. He says, I'm glad to see somebody's awake. Well, he says, you're right. He says, says I, that'll destroy somebody. That'll destroy people in Ireland. If they get doing that, if Paddy gets doing that, he's going to bet like hell. You're exactly right, he says. It shouldn't be allowed, and it's not allowed in America, as he said. Okay? So now, just to get that account, in contracts for differences, they're outside most of the regulation in the world. They're illegal for Americans to indulge in. And uh, you just make a contract with another person, who is the trader, over the counter, they call it, that you will bet on the price of a particular commodity rising or falling. You never own the commodity. Sean Quinn would never own Anglo-Irish Bank. The only way he could become the owner of Anglo-Irish Bank was if he had the shares above a certain amount. Some said that's what he was up to. But interestingly in the programme, he was. it said that he was asked by Sean Fitzpatrick and David Drum to buy the whole thing out. And he balked at it, which I was surprised at, because I thought that was his motive. Now, you might read a different thing into it than me. So, 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 so the point is, is that if a strange person could acquire my sales and profit records for a simple beef farm and know what my cattle made, they could say Val's heifers at a year old are now making 
1200. His cows are making 2200. I, I don't sell calves, I keep my calves. And I'm going to take out a CFD. You could be the, my viewer there. You never met me, maybe. And you can get on to the CFD man on the London Stock Exchange or on the somewhere else and make a contract for difference. And if the price of the heifer and the cows goes up, after a while, they have to pay you the margin call, as called. They have to pay you. Or you could leave it lying there and not claim it at all and just continue on as it is. Just like the, not taking your money out of the bookie. On the other hand, if they're going to go the other way, and the price of cattle falls, and the standard of, of my cattle decreases, I start breeding out, out hairy, milky Frisians and that, and those kind of jerseys and that, bullocks, and all that. There might be also in this too, the price of a bullock, which might be 1400 a year and a half, or whatever it is. So you might have various brands of cattle, so if I start not doing the job well and the price goes down, you might say, ha oh, he'll breed them. I don't worry about that. He'll have good ones. You might bet on the price going up. But some of the fellows say, ah, oh, but sure, he'll lose interest. You watch him. And I'm doing that now. He'll fizzle out and he'll burn out and he'll not be a while back. He'll have bad cattle. And he bets on that. But the point is, you never own the cattle. In fact, I don't even have to know that you're betting on them. As long as you can get the detail, which I suppose in a market situation, well, it's, there's plenty of sources to that. And all, all you have to do is ask me what I get for the recent bullock or whatever. It doesn't really matter of the recent cow. The, you hope you understand the principle involved. Hope you understand. Now, about ownership. If Sean, when Sean Quinn bought the share, bought, did the contract for differences on Anglo-Irish Bank, I think they were trading around 21. Don't, don't hold me to it. 21 euros. And he... He uh, took out his contract for differences and his children were asked to sign the documents to commit his other property to the bets. So this is like the bookie. The bookie might let you open an account and might let you run up a debt, but he needs something as security. He might put your house or your farm or your some other thing, or he might have a say in your bank account or whatever. You look on the folio of a house online, get the folios of houses there, you'll see subject to mortgage. The mortgage holds for say, or someone else has a right away. So he will have some type of claim on your property. And all of Sean's children signed a document that they would commit the assets of Quinn, all Quinn's assets, including the insurance, which he shouldn't have done, I believe, I'm not too sure, but all Quinn's assets, to guarantee he would pay the margin calls when the margins came. I doubt we ever made anything on the margin calls. I doubt if it ever went the other way, because at the time that he was betting on these contracts for differences, there was people, called, there was a man called Paul Polson and a number of others, many in America, who were shorting, who were betting on the backside falling out of the whole property market based on the subprime mortgage situation they were betting on that so sean was betting on the thing going up they were betting on the thing going down but i would say if the contracts for if the price of the share had to continue to rise let's say it went from 21 to 31 he would have a lump of money to claim off the other person of the counterparty that's known as the counterparty he would be able to claim that money and when he got that money, there was nothing stopping him to stopping him using it to buy Anglo Irish Bank to become the main shareholder above the legal limit to be the owner, and appoint your executives and all that. There was nothing stopping him doing that. So in a way, he was intending to buy um, the share. I'd say he was intending to buy Anglo Irish Bank. I won't speak for the man, but that is, I think, what could have happened if he made this handy money. He was hoping to make the handy money. He had see serious confidence in David Drum and Sean Fitzpatrick. Why he had that, I don't know. And in fact, they began to get worried that he was getting in too big. And if, if he went bottom up, the whole businesses were gone and they tried to get him to stop. According to the program, they tried to get him to stop buying any more shares. Stop. You're in a hole. Stop. And he believed when the price fell, so we'd say the price fell, instead of it going up to 31, right? It went down, we'd say, we'd say it went down to 11. Right, you see that there? So 
because this is what has happened the price went to fall and he says why not buy now when it's cheap they'll go up again and he admits that was a fatal mistake i wonder how i covered everything in this and left my viewers all the wiser about contracts for differences the concept of them the concept of the counterparty you're betting only one can win and one can lose. There's only two people involved. The initial underlying asset is not involved at all. They're called over the counter because they're not as well regulated as, as anything else. But you won't be able to buy uh, these contracts for differences if you're a straw man. You have to have assets and Sean Quinn had the assets. And when the whole lot collapsed, he kept trying to raid all his businesses apparently including his insurance for millions and millions and millions to pay the margin call and eventually the whole thing collapsed and then as i understand it he didn't give up freely uh, he mentions that kevin lunny and the other person there in the company agreed to put the insurance on the line as well i don't buy his claim that the kids were to blame daddy monkey see monkey do daddy is in control he was a very hands-on man and it's not easy to stand up against your own successful father i don't know why he had it all divested out to the kids as well it was better he had to float his company and have it a limited company in my opinion my opinion but that's what happened now you'll all say i made an earlier video in which I said, if the Irish taxpayer had to bail him out, he would have paid back all the money. We might have actually gained on that. A lot of people ate the head of me, ate the head of me for this. And then when the courts got involved and they started forcing the sale of all his assets and all of that, he did. it was some blow to him. And there was an application in the court recently to stop him going up into this. But there's one finishing thing I want to make on this. I often wonder, I would have to agree, I love that country down there, that part of Cavan. I, 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 I know some of the people who work there, and they were lovely, great people. I used to go to clay pigeon shoots down there, and they'd be talking about them. But, but I would have to make the point. He did one thing very early on. He built a wind farm on Sleeve Russian. He destroyed Sleeve Russian with them. They're a horrible eyesore. They don't work. And that indicated to me that the bowel Sean Quinn wasn't as clever as he thought he was. Anyone that invests in renewable energy is an idiot. But unless you're getting out of them straight away, and I think he did sell it, fair enough. I don't know how that goes, but he held them for a long time. Now, I have to admit, that was only one part of his, of his business. And maybe we have to be lighter on him on that one little mistake. Maybe he just wanted to show off his green credentials and nothing like that. Down in Offaly, Yellow River Group, the uh, Yellow River investors in the wind farm down there are suing SSC. They don't want to buy it. And I have, as you know, dedicated my life to destroying the good name of wind energy all over the world. But that was one thing he did. And that was a warning to me. This fella isn't just at the races. There's something amiss. There's something wrong with something, someone who starts off with windmills. Something very, very wrong. And I know he mightn't like me saying that. But otherwise than that... Uh, the whole thing was an unbelievable mess and nearly cost a man his life in the end, one way or the other. We're not going to that. I hope I've now explained contracts for differences to you. I hope you understand them. And I have to shake hands with myself and say, when the professor up on the course in 2002 explained them to me, the first thing I got him to do was repeat the process. And when he, when he did that, I said, that's going to hang a few, one or two people in Ireland. This is going to bring down somebody in Ireland. He says, I fully agree with you. I don't think they should be legal. I don't think they should be legal. It will. Somebody's going to come a cropper with these things. Folks, I hope I've explained it. If you want more explained, get on to me. I have a book on it in here. I studied it a while back and I happen to have an interest in this kind of stuff. Didn't catch me, and that's one thing for sure. <laughs> See, Sean Quinn wasn't a cabin man, he was an affirm man a man. He was nearly a cabin man, but he wasn't a cabin man. If he had to be a cabin man, they wouldn't catch him as easy. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. We'll see you back for something else. Bye.